for my books, I read, I record, I narrate and record. I do all of the audio editing behind the scenes. I get all the tracks uploaded onto ACX and then I get hit publish. The majority of my audience, especially for my nonfiction, is busy moms, homeschooling moms. So if it's not on Audible, there's a really good chance that they're not gonna have an opportunity to sit and read my book. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited to welcome my friend Kelda to the podcast. Kelda is a author of eight books, some fiction, some nonfiction, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but she also has recorded her own audiobooks. And I, when she first told me this, I was like, wait, 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 you did what now? I didn't even know that you could self publish an audiobook until she told me. And I, um, and when she told me how not necessarily easy it is, but just how doable it is, I was like, we've got to have you on the, the podcast and have you talk about this. So I'm excited to get into that conversation with her today and to learn just a little bit more about her journey and the wisdom she has to share with us. So Kelda, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. I'm excited to be here. So before I start peppering you with all the questions, do you um, just want to share a little bit with us about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, I've been married to my to the same husband for uh, <laughs> for over 30 years. And we have four young adult children and we have our first grandbaby on the way, which is very exciting. So exciting. Um, and we're in a, a whole different season of our lives than we have been. We homeschooled our children. Our oldest did go to high school, but the rest um, homeschooled through high school. And now I help homeschool families and I consult with them. And I do a lot of tutoring for homeschool students. Mm -hmm. I began writing, seriously writing. I had I had self-published my first two nonfiction books, I think in 2011, maybe 2013, somewhere in there. And then in 2016, I began writing fiction. I was facilitating a class of uh, homeschoolers through this novel writing curriculum. And I started writing with them and then ideas started flowing. And in 2019, I self-published my first novel. I love that origin story because I think there's something about play that's so key to creativity that we as yeah. adults forget to tap into. So the fact right. that you're like in the space of other, like, I know yes. they're probably teenagers, but you're in the space of individuals who have not been inundated with life's worries quite yet. You know, they have right. their struggles and their worries, but not to the same extreme as when you get to adulthood and you start to lose that childlike wonder of the world. And so the fact that you're like around teenagers and teaching about not novel writing, that's how you right. kind of like kindled that passion. It did. And the reason I started doing the exercises with them, this was my third time through the curriculum. It wasn't like I'd done it with other ones of my, of my own children with groups of their mm -hmm. ages. And so this was the first time that I was with a group that were really struggling with mm -hmm. the concepts of the, of the writing process. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe if I did it with them and I did not know it was going to tap into something completely foreign for me, literally mm -hmm. foreign for me, because I'd always just imagined myself being a nonfiction writer, mm -hmm. never a fiction writer. So you kind of stumbled into the world of fiction. Fell into it. Yeah. And fell in love with it. <laughs> I fell in love with it. But I think it was because people started talking to me and then I had to tell their story. Mm. And unless you write fiction, I don't think you understand that statement. And so when Agreed. Um, I have a very uh, close acquaintance who is a psychiatrist and we were having dinner at her house, a group of ladies were all at her house. And somebody says, yeah, Kelda has voices talking in her head. And of course her radar goes a different direction professionally. And then we start talking and she reads some of what I've written and she says, oh, you're not, you're not crazy, Kelda, you're a writer. And I was like, I'm a writer. It was very validating. So oh, that's so funny. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> so how did you end up self-publishing? Did you try to go the traditional route or did you I just did. decide off the bat that you were? Well, okay. I read all the things. I watched all the things that I could get my hands on at the time. Mm -hmm. And every website, every place that I went says, you write a cover letter. Basically you sit in pages, you try and find 
a literary agent. So that's what I did. I, I thought I was a romance writer, like in my mind, because there was romance in my story. And I really didn't know what genre my stories fit into because we're ignorant when we first start, you know, yeah. into a process, we don't know. And so much of what we learn, we kind of learn through the back door anyway. Like we kind of stumble mm -hmm. into it or we, or we hear something, we pursue that a little bit and we pursue another idea and it just kind of starts snowballing until we get a little more confidence about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So when I began that process, you know, it's like, who are your favorite authors represented by? Or what do you think your stories are most like? Who are they represented by? So I started Googling those agencies. I started, mm -hmm. you know, looking through that whole process and I sent in things and I got a lot of rejection. And the first few things that I was sending out weren't even things that I published. Like it was my very first raw mm -hmm. stuff. It, it wasn't good. I'm just going to say that. Like I'm a much better writer just because I've been writing for this amount of time. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it can't be good. It just wasn't the quality that I am writing at now. Mm -hmm. does, does that make sense? Yeah, no, that um, makes sense. With practice, so, you improved your craft. Exactly. I, you just, you, you improve over time. Like you mm -hmm. just, if you keep doing something over and over again, and, and I do see an improvement. Um, but the rejection for probably about a year, you know, cause it just takes months to hear mm -hmm. back from anybody. I do not have the attention span. Maybe I'm lazy. I don't know. No. Um, maybe I just don't have the fortitude to be continuously rejected. So I really started praying about some discernment. Discernment is not my natural spiritual gift. So I find myself praying for discernment a lot. And all of a sudden I started getting these feeds on Facebook and different videos and different things on, on social media. And it was all about self-publishing. Mm. And I was like, okay, let's pay attention to that. I started watching some people paying attention to their information. Um, I never bought into anything because I couldn't afford it at the time. Like I could never have afforded thousands of dollars for a mentor. Right. Like I couldn't have done that at the time. Right. So my um, sister-in-law has a friend. She's now my friend also. And uh, she's a children's book author and okay. she self-published through Amazon. And so we sat over coffee one day. I made an appointment. We sat over coffee and I just took copious notes for about 45 minutes of time that I had with her. Mm. Left that meeting, started just doing a lot of research and republished my first two books that I had done with a little private uh, publisher, self-publisher, republished them on Amazon through the KDP. Uh, actually, that's when I did my first audiobooks because I wanted to practice that as well because I already had material to publish and mm -hmm. I just needed to update a cover and I just needed a different ISBN number and, you know, different things that you learn along the way that I had gathered when I published in, you know, my nonfiction, because right. I was preparing like, okay, I've already kind of done this baby step. Now I've got this material. Let's see what it looks like on Amazon. And then that's when it just like the snowball fell. Like it was just mm. like, we're rolling and rolling and rolling. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I've published this book on Amazon. Yeah. And th at the same time I was learning how to uh, do the audiobooks because I knew that that was going to be also under KDP umbrella mm -hmm. and Kindle umbrella. So I, I've been learning and I haven't, I won't say that I've mastered any of it, but I will say that I can shelf publish books now. Even after the book was published, even after my first novel Impact was published, um, I still got a rejection letter from another literary agent. So it had been lingering out there for months, you know, and it's yeah. like, oh, well, okay, thank you. You missed your opportunity. I'm going <laughs> to go this route. And I haven't looked back and mm -hmm. I've been asked by a few people, you know, are you going to try and, you know, traditionally publish? And I said, at this point, no, I mean, I'm gradually growing a following, an audience. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm gradually growing my readership. And I don't know that they could offer me that much more and I'm going to pay them royalties. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, I'm not making a million dollars right now. So <laughs> I'm still starting out, but it's still kind of fun. YouTube has been my best friend. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Geeky men are my best friends on YouTube. I love it. Love there are all. women too, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, the majority of what I've learned has <laughs> been from geeky men. I will tell you that they've been the ones, especially the ones when I was doing the audiobooks. Oh, and, I imagine that. Yeah. Because they're the ones who do the sound. They're the sound guys. Mm-hmm. And so they've been the ones that have really been the, the most influential in that side of learning. Yeah. I love just how honest you're being with us. Like, you know, this is my journey and I just, mm-hmm. I'm embracing it and I'm going with it and it's what I need to do. And, you know, it's no small feat to no. write a book and put it out there into the world. And I think sometimes people mistake being traditionally published versus like going on the self-publishing route, they mistake it that um, there's something different that's happening between the two. Mm-hmm. The traditional publisher tends to have a uh, maybe name recognition. They have distributors to bookstores and stuff like that. But you can do those things too. You can use distribution channels through Ingram Spark or for through Amazon. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, what the publisher does is they assume the responsibility of the printing right. and some of the marketing. You're just saying, I'm just going to assume that responsibility and I'm just yeah. going to use Amazon as my printer and I'm going to do the marketing myself. So you just kind of take out that middle person. Um, and it's not for everybody. It's not. Not everybody no. wants to do it. Not everybody wants to take on that responsibility. But at the end of the day, there there is wisdom and value to what the traditional publishing brings, but there's also pros to going the indie route as well and doing that self-publishing side of things. And so because things like you get the chance to record your own audiobook, like yeah. you did. Why don't we talk about that a little bit about your experience of um, self-publishing an audiobook? Okay. Um, one more thing I would like to say about what we were just talking about oh, just sure. is that Um, taking the responsibility was more of a curiosity driven Mm -hmm. thing. Can I do it? Mm -hmm. And, and I don't believe that we have to reinvent a wheel ever. So let's investigate. Let's see if this is a possibility. And again, I was more focused on getting a book published than I was about getting an agent and a publisher. Mm-hmm. And I know that for some writers, it's it's more important for them to have an agent. It's more important for them to have a publisher and to go that route. And they're willing to wait years, maybe decades yeah. until they've gotten to those points. And that is their choice. It just wasn't my choice. Yeah. And so I'm not saying that this is superior to anything else. I'm just saying that this has been my route and that I, you know, I would encourage anyone to follow what they have on their heart's desire um, Mm -hmm. regarding their own writing. So true. So true. And I want to point out too, you said your, your goal is to get books published. And what you meant by that is get a book in print Mm -hmm. and distributed to a reader. Yes. Yes. And that's what you truly, at the end of the day, that was your end goal. And you didn't necessarily need an established publishing house to do that for you. In the, those earlier times, the only place I could find to self-publish were the little vanity publishers. You know, you paid for the books. There was no place. I I bought a bunch of books Mm -hmm. or you could, they would print on demand Mm -hmm. um, if someone ordered one through their website, but there was no other options. And really Amazon wasn't that option then either. Nope. So I just sort of eased right into it at the, at the right time with them Mm. as, as they began expanding um, mm-hmm. their services when they bought create space and brought it under right. their umbrella exactly and, yeah, and made so it that, a little easier of a platform oh, to navigate. It, and I will tell you that it is such an easy website to maneuver mm-hmm. and just if you're kind of on the fence about which way you should go go put it up there and get a get a test copy and yeah. do all the things and see if that's really something that you're curious about because you're not going to be out anything to create an account exactly. And to get your, you know, your author's copy or your, your preview Mm -hmm. copy, it's just going to be the cost for them to print and ship that to you. So for less than 10 bucks, if you've got the cover and you've got the content and you've got, and they give you a template, like, come on, y'all, it's not that hard. And so um, just try it and see if it's something that you would, they've made it very user-friendly is my point. Yes, they have. Um, Just be careful not to hit publish. 
Exactly. Don't hit publish. <laughs> Don't hit Don't publish. Hit publish. <laughs> it's so funny. So I had put an ebook up a long time ago, like when it was Create Space. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything. I didn't know I could Google stuff. I had no clue. And so when I went to release my guided journal in 21, um, I was setting up my Goodreads account and it was automatically pulling my stuff from Amazon. And I had unpublished that ebook because I was like, oh, that's, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And so I unpublished it, but it still was pulling it from Amazon because it had been published. Right. And so I had to like contact customer service and be like, hey, can you take this off? Because this was a mistake from like way back in 20. Way back when. We're talking like 2010. Like we're yeah. talking like way back when. All that to say, that's a cautionary tale. Don't hit publish right. until you're absolutely don't, don't ready. Don't hit publish until you're absolutely ready. Yes. But you can go through the whole process mm-hmm. and even request a proof copy before you hit publish. And that right. might show you what you need to know to make right. that educated decision. Right. To see if this is something you can really do independently. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm curious. I wanted to know if I could do it. Yeah. I so. love that. I love that you approached it that way. Because I think you went into it with not an attitude of scarcity, which Mm-mm. sometimes we authors can find ourselves in because like, yes. oh my gosh, there's only so many um, agents and there's only so many publishers, only publishing right. so many books, so many slots, right. especially with the fiction world. Like there's, right. it just keeps shrinking and shrinking. And so there is this like scarcity, like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to get in front of somebody. My book's never going to get published. Um, and you were like not coming from that place of scarcity you're coming from a place of can I do this and is this the right way for me to do it and being in that curious space I think allowed for you to make some courageous decisions and I think because I didn't have a writing background and I didn't have any any experience in publishing or in that world at all um, I didn't know there was scarcity I didn't know the numbers Mm. I didn't, didn't know any statistics and so I don't think that that I think that that ignorance, that that innocence of uh, that world mm. um, helped me just to be curious and just be open minded to what were the possibilities. And you carried that into the audiobook. book. Uh, the audio books. Those are my babies. Yeah. I love them all. They so are so us- wonderful. <laughs> I love it. I love how you talk about them. You get so excited when you talk about I do, them. I do. I do. I do. And if anybody feels that excitement, I just want to like, ah, oh, yes, I just want to share that with y'all because it's very contagious. Um, okay. So I love to be read too. I love audiobooks. Gosh, I don't even know if there's a word for how many audio book hours I have listened to and re-listened to. And mm-hmm. like every night I go to bed with something playing in my head. Um, fiction, nonfiction, uh, not really podcasts as much, but definitely stories, you mm-hmm. know, definitely, uh, the, those kinds of things. And I set the timer and I fall asleep to someone reading to me and it may be a book that I've read 15 times. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. I might just go, Oh, I like chapter 15 and I'll fall asleep to that section of that book for a season, you know, just because I know it's gonna, it, that's what it does for me. But the audiobook part I listened to a lady be interviewed, an author be interviewed, and I can't remember even when or where. And she made the comment that she didn't want to exclude that audience. Mm. She didn't want to exclude the listeners Mm. because she was asked, why did you publish the Kindle version, you know, the ebook version and the audiobook version first. Mm. And she said, well, it was taking a long time for the paperback and or the hardcover, whatever she was publishing at the time. And she is an agent. She has real publishers, those kind of things. She says, no, I pushed for these to come first because I knew that digital reading was such in high demand. And I also knew that my audience, for the most part, it was a business book, were commuters. Mm. And I went, Yes. The majority of my audience, especially for my nonfiction, is busy moms, homeschooling moms. So if it's not on Audible, there's a really good chance that they're not going to have an opportunity to sit and read my book. Mm. Even if it's even if it's this thick, it doesn't matter. Right. They're not going to have an opportunity. So if they have an opportunity to hear it and listen to it and multitask and fold the laundry or rock the baby or whatever they're doing, mm-hmm. it's just going to be a service 
to my reader Mm. is that they have the option for that. I also learned with my early books that a couple of the people that I asked to beta read for me, family members, people, and they're like, you know, I'm not going to read that book, but if you read it to me. So we would get on a group call or we would get on the phone call and I would just read to them a chapter or a couple of chapters a night. Oh, wow. And so I realized I loved to read to my children. I, I love to read to my classroom when I was a classroom teacher. You know, I think that um, bibliotherapy is a real thing when I was a school mm. counselor, especially with little kids, you know, you can tell a story and it, it makes a different impact than you saying these are the rules mm-hmm. or this is the way life is or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever they're going through dealing with their emotions. It's sometimes a lot easier when it's with a character than it right. is with a little person. And uh, even for adults, it's easier to deal with the character <laughs> than it is to deal with these really big feelings. I was just and... talking to somebody about this because um, she writes books to help start conversations. And I said, it's sometimes easier to have conversations yeah. about the tough, awkward subjects when it's right. about a fictional character. Exactly. Right? And it's not the exactly. real world. And it's yeah. when, you know, it's when our heroes are, are suffering that we can like go, oh, you know, we can mm-hmm. have empathy and we can, you know, lots of things happening. So um, with the audiobooks, a, a few things were very important to me is that they be connecting either with my voice, reading them as because the, I, I believe it's very powerful, especially with nonfiction, when the author reads their words. Because I think you get the inflection, you get the important feelings, Mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes a little emotion and sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, it's bigger. It's bigger Mm -hmm. if if it comes from their own words. When I recorded my first two nonfiction, I read so fast. And when (laughs) I read my first fiction, I read so fast. My last one that I just recorded was Fina. And it's so much like, it's just better. It's just better all the way around. Let's just say that you practice, you, you know, the sound quality. Yep. Um, I watched so many hours of how-to videos. Mm. I use a program called Audacity, which is free. I know if you have a Mac or, you know, an Apple, whatever, they have GarageBand, which I think is similar. I've never used that. Mm-hmm. I've um, heard I've been, similar. But I, I know Audacity now pretty well. Even the upgraded version is really simple to use. Again, mm. basic, basic knowledge. Um, I can edit, I can make it meet the standards now. Um, I did have to call one of my, initially, I had to call one of my son's friends over who was doing an internship at a recording studio. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he goes, okay, well, let me show you. And he's, you know, this poor little guy, like he's this, you know, he's barely 19 and he's sitting (laughs) in my little bitty office with me. And I'm like, give me all of your knowledge. Like, (laughs) And I said, and now I want you to put it on your resume that you have done some of the audio editing for this audio book on your resume Mm -hmm. because you have helped me exponentially. And um, so anyway, it just was really little baby steps again. Um, I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to meet these standards for, for Audible. Well, it's ACX is the, is who filters it for, I guess, Spotify and Amazon and, you know, all the people they have a little like here, click here. And it says, you need to go here if you want to have your own audio book. So they're all related. They're Mm -hmm. all really close cousins, brother, sister, something. I don't know, but (laughs) they are, they're all family and they play very nicely together. Oh, that's, so that's one of the other parts that I like on behind the scenes. Um, I ordered a microphone. I have a, a Rode, R-O-D-E podcaster. I see the box up there. I know there are so many mics. You can just go to any, you know, electronic yeah. store, buy a mic. Um, the last one I actually did on my gamer headphones in my closet because my house was so noisy at the time. It was kind of a crazy season. So I just went in with my gamer headphones on and my gamer mic. And yes, I had to filter it a little differently because it was on that frequency, but it Mm -hmm. still did just fine. Yeah. And if you, and for the person who's listening, who's like, okay, that feels a little overwhelming to figure out mics and everything. There is a, um, a YouTube channel called think media and they have a lot of, um, 
tutorials or videos where they break down the different microphones and and what they do and price points right. and and right. how techy they are and how easier they are to use and things like that. So if you're like, I need to look into some of this equipment and you're like, I just need somebody to explain it very simply to me, that yes. might be a place where you can check out that information. And I really did like the videos along those lines that would say, okay, here's this one and here's this one. You know, mm -hmm. I'm good with choice A, choice B. This is your price range. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't go in the thousands of dollars investment. In fact, now you can see the sound tiles in my office back here. But um, before I made a, uh, like a big Rubbermaid container mm -hmm. and I lined it with egg foam, like that mattress foam stuff. Mm -hmm. And I stuck my mic in there and I just spoke in there and it recorded beautifully. And yes. so it's, it's little things like that, that I just couldn't get away from sound in, in the room that I had chosen to record in. So and, it sounds um, like to me that when it comes to recording that audiobook and self-publishing that audiobook, it's an easy platform to use, but you do have to pay attention to that audio. And so yes. what you're saying to us is if this is the route you want to go, which is a good one to do because you're you're getting a whole nother segment of people engaging with your story. But if that's something you want to do, you need to do a little bit of research. Yes. But there's a lot out there that can help you on YouTube. Yes. There is so much out there and the resources on ACX are okay. also very informative. They have how-to videos. They tell you step-by-step -step in, in different, um, you know, different blog posts, different vlogs that they tell you exactly what you're doing and what you need to do and how right. to do it. And for one of my, two of my books, um, they're in the same universe, um, I actually hired out. I when you say hire out, you mean hired out the recording of the book? The and entire process of the book. Okay. And why I, did you like do for, that? For my books, I read, I record, I narrate and record. I do all of the audio editing behind the scenes. I get all the tracks uploaded onto ACX and then I get hit publish. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes through there their analytics to make sure it meets all the standards, right. make sure nothing's like you didn't go like track two, track two, even though it's supposed to be track two, track three, you know what right. I'm saying? Like either you didn't have those quality control, it. quality control. They take care of all of that for you. Um, and you know, when you upload an audio file, if it meets their standards or not mm -hmm. instantly. Yeah. And so you can just keep editing until you get it right. Um, but what I was going to say is that I did hire narrators and I hired a company. I held auditions basically for mm -hmm. different voices that I liked. And then I paid money and they did the, all of the audio files. Okay. They took care of everything from start to finish. Is there and a so reason I, why you chose to do that with that book? Because several of the characters have accents mm. and it was told in dual perspective or it was told from a man's perspective. I can't pull that off. <laughs> the book's entitled Sweet Caroline, and it goes back between Sweet Caroline and the and the male uh, Hashim, and it goes back and forth between those two. And so I could have done her voice probably, but his voice, I'm I wanted it a certain way. I wanted it a certain quality. And as a result of him reading that book, I hired him to read the next in the section because he did that character's voice so well. Mm. And not that you have to do voices, but just the quality of the storytelling and the dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, he did very, very well. And he is an actor. Like he's a real person. Right. He's in high demand for audiobooks. He does things professionally. Like, this is what he does. Like, it's just what he, what he does. This is what he does. And this is what this lady does. You know, right. they're, they're all like, if you click on my books and you go, oh, okay, I recognize, I recognize their names. And, right. um, I wanted it so badly that I'm just like, please, please, please. Can I have that? No, <laughs> because it's a financial investment, right? That, that was an investment. And I, mm -hmm. and I have yet to recoup all of that investment in royalties yet, mm -hmm. but, but it's there. And it's you there still forever. have, I was going to say, it's you an still investment. have some time. They're and, babies. They're right. still little baby book babies. They've only been published two years, mm -hmm. really solidly for two years, the audio book. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's just now beginning to, to gain some right. momentum. And from yeah. what I understand, you released your books and now you're kind of, um, you focused on learning how to release them, how to get them into yes. print. And now you're learning how to market them really well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's two different skill sets. Yeah.
you just said it all. That is two different skill sets. That is different parts of your brain. It really is. And my background is in education. Mm -hmm. My background is not in business. Mm -hmm. And, and so even though we own our own business, what we've learned through that has been by trial and error, much like marketing. And when you say you own your own business, like you and your husband own your own business. My husband and I own our own business. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we didn't come from a business background. This is all mm-hmm. things that we've, you know, we are, we still, we read a lot of business books because mm-hmm. we don't know what we're doing, right? Like we still need to know more. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what we have to do. We, we do need to balance a little bit. Like we can't, I can't, I cannot do it all. I don't right. think we are designed to do everything ourselves. We and just don't is, even have enough hours in we, the day. There's not enough happen. hours in the day. And I am pretty I'm pretty efficient with my time and Mm -hmm. there's still not enough hours in the day. You know, there's always a list of things to do. So before the great 2020, I was (laughs) running ads and, and having good sales from those ads. When you say ads, you mean like Amazon or? uh, Amazon ads, Facebook ads. Like I was running ads um, now that you can do ads on a lot of different social Mm -hmm. media. But at the time it was Amazon ads was where I started and um, feeling really confident in that and gaining a little momentum. And then in 2020, everybody's just home and clicking. And I am, because it's a pay-per-click ad. And I was, my my ads versus sales were, oh no, not a good Right. What is it? ROI, not a yep. good return on investment at all. So I stopped the ads. And then when I thought about going back and doing them again, it was right during the holidays. Mm-hmm. And that's when the ad prices boost a lot. So yeah. I was like, okay, I'll just wait. And so I've been in the process of really figuring out where my investment dollars need to be, my mm-hmm. advertising dollars where I need to really put my attention and focus mm-hmm. um, in those areas. And so right. Um, it's not my strength, the business part, but I won't say that, that I'm horrible at it right? because the little bit that I have done with ads or the little bit that I have done with, um, you know, getting, getting the word out there that I'm an author, it's working. Right. But again, we've only been doing this a few years. I was just going to say, I think in our world of writing, we kind of uh, put a lot of emphasis on launch week and we kind of like base the success of a book on that launch week. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's actually not for the majority of books. That's not how it works for the majority of the books. It's just like slow and slow and steady winning the race. Yeah. Right. Right. And if we're going to think about this as a business, we have to think about this. Like if you're going to have a store and you're going to mm-hmm. have items in it. You're not going to be like, okay, I'm going to sell these items for one week. And if they sell or not, that determines our success. Like, no, right. you're going to keep mm-hmm. those doors open. And some days you're going to have lots of sales. Some seasons you'll have more sales than others, but you keep pushing those products and you keep, right. you know, providing them to your customer. You don't stop right. just because your opening week has finished. Exactly. I think, I think authors forget that. They forget that this is a long-term investment into putting yeah. this product into the hands of a reader. And I also think that we are impatient and we have put, you know, our blood, sweat and tears into this, into this project, whatever it is, mm-hmm. whether it's a book, an audio book, a, a, a whatever. Right. And we expect instant gratification. Mm. We expect to submit it and for it to come back and we're accolades and mm-hmm. we're wonderful. And we earn the gold star and we put the A plus on the top of our papers and, oh, you know, everything was wonderful. And, oh, look, we have all these really great reviews and, you know, we push and push and push and push. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that this is, is a thing that we can just instantly click and, and it's magically done. Right. And that we see these authors that we admire, that seem to have had overnight success. Mm -hmm. That's a load of baloney right there. That is not a real thing. And how many hours and years and, and hardships have they encountered that we don't see because Mm -hmm. now, you know, their book was made into a movie or they now have interviews or Mm -hmm. they now have all of these things. And so so I will tell you that my first and second books are still the ones that are selling the most on Mm. Amazon. 
It's yeah, not the one that I just longer. recently found. They've been there longer. Right. And how many times do we have to see something come up on our True. feed before we make the decision to purchase it? Right. And right. people say, oh, I need to get your book. Yeah. And it might be three years. So I, so just recently, it's really funny. One lady at church and then another uh, young friend, she grew up with my children. Um, she, the, out of the blue, contact me and say, oh my gosh, I just finished reading whatever book. And I loved it. It was my first book or my second book. And you're like, you know, Oh, okay. (laughs) Thank you. Like, Oh my God. Like I was thrilled. I was thrilled. So I don't do this to be a one hit wonder. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, if you have, if you are a writer and you have one book in you and it is the end all be all life goal, you run with that because Mm -hmm. there's a reason that you are feeling compelled and, and called to write this Mm -hmm. book, whatever it is. But if you are a writer, like I have now seen to become, it was not my intention. I had three titles for three books and they were all nonfiction. I had no fiction in me, Telda's viewpoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apparently, yeah, there's a lot of other books inside of me. (laughs) But I think that if you're in this to be a writer, we have to say, Wrap that up, send it out into the universe. Mm. Wrap that up, send it out into the universe. Oh, wait, I have these projects and they're both like kind of competing for my time and attention. Okay, which one needs to be written first? Mm -hmm. Okay, let them in the fast track lane. Then the other one comes when it's ready. But it's a long-term game of providing something to your reader. Yes, it is not a short-term game at this point. And yeah. just because I wrote one book and I got it out there and I was pleased as punch and I had the audio and all the things, it doesn't mean that that was the end all be all. And yeah, your is job a, is there, just starting. Really? It's just starting. Now yeah. we have to market this baby. Oh, mm-hmm. but wait, I have this other story I want to be writing at the same time. Oh, you know, so we there's a there's a give and take and there's a balance to all the things that that we mm-hmm. feel that are necessary. You know, so that's the the part that is hardest for me, not just the business side of it. It's just a balance. Am I a writer today or do I need to be a business person today? Because I can't always do them on the same day. Yes. Where am I going to put my identity today? Where am I going to put my efforts and my heart today and pour it in a hundred? I'm not a, I'm not just a skimmer kind of person as if you can't tell them. My friend told me one time I was an extremist and I'm like, I am not an extremist. And then she labels all the things about my life. And I went, oh yeah, I'm kind of an extremist. (laughs) You know, it's, I'm a hundred percent in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so if, mm-hmm. if I'm going to adopt this part of my personality and and put it into my life and nurture it as a writer, then I really do need to say that's going to be my focus that I'm going to write and just keep on that and let it grow organically, I guess, mm-hmm. boost it on occasion. But I'm not going to I'm not going to fight the 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 waves and the trends and the analytics. And I can't I don't I do not have the capacity for that. Right. 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 I think what you just shared right there is really gold and really just very valuable and like wisdom that, that give and take that having to put on one hat and the other, because yes, we are creators. We're creating product. We're in product development, but then we're in business and we have to make the business run. And that requires, you know, production and marketing. And so it's really like three different areas, three different skill yeah. sets. And, um, and we have to take the hat off at some times and say, I'm Mm -hmm. not a writer right now. I'm I'm a business owner. And what do I need to do to get the thing done and to get it out there into the world? And, um, and that can be really hard for our creative souls Mm -hmm. to be okay with that. And so I appreciate you sharing that and appreciate you putting words to that for us. As we begin to wrap up this conversation that we are having, um, which I don't want to end it because I'm having such a fun time, but as we begin to wrap it up, is there anything else that you would tell somebody who's at the beginning stages of this writing journey, um, beginning stages of the publishing and the business and the marketing and all the things they're trying to navigate it all? Do you have any wisdom or advice or tips or anything that you want to share with them? Absolutely. Um, I really want to say this is that, um, you know, we can't do everything at once. So even if they say you have to have this done or you have to have that done or, oh, you can, you have to do it this route. Mm-hmm. Whoa, mm-hmm. let's just 
take a minute and assess that if that's really where you're supposed to be. Again, mm. discernment. Um, be patient with yourself. Mm. That's something that I've really had to learn is that's that good. I can't write for hours and hours and hours. Mm. I can't get all the business stuff done every single day. Um, you know, just to be patient and it's okay to have a list that never mm. ends. Yep. You know, it's okay to have that. And, um, because, because my point was, is that I don't have the capacity to do everything every day. I just, right. I just don't. And, um, because I do have a day job, like I do other real things. I have right. a family. I, I have things that I like to do that are not anywhere related to writing. <laughs> um, and the two things that I think for somebody to, who's just beginning in this, that has really helped me. And that is to limit distractions and to stay focused because you only have a limited amount of time for your, for the craft of writing or mm -hmm. for the craft of publishing, or that if you wanted to just do audiobooks or if you just wanted to do ebooks or whatever your format is for the right. information that you want to share with people, the stories you want to share with people. And, and so I'm like, I have learned that I write really well in 25 to 45 minute chunks of time get up, go rotate laundry, eat something, you know, go to the restroom, let the dogs out, whatever's happening. And then I can come back and focus. Even if I have a whole six or seven hours of a day to write, that's yeah. how I break it up in time. At the time, my children were mostly in high school, you know, middle school and high school when I started writing. And so mom sometimes needed to unplug a little bit. I wouldn't take a whole day away from them when they were younger. Mm-hmm. But when with the now that they're older and mostly out of the house, I, I have a little bit more flexibility to my time. But at the right. moment when I started writing, I did have to limit those distractions and say, it's a writing day for mom and call mm. it, you know, I call it. And you protected <laughs> it. And I protected it. And I had children and my husband and I had resources that helped me protect even or I got up before everybody else in the house. Mm hmm. And I, and I did it for an hour before I had to be on, you know, mm -hmm. for my day. And so I think that you do have to, to make your priorities and make your time and limit those distractions as much as possible. Well, I think that right there is the worth of like the worth listening to this episode was just to get that encouragement right there. The permission to, to protect the time, the permission yeah. to, um, to say, yes, this is important to do. And um, just, the reminder that it needs to be done too, if we're going right. to be doing this work as a writer. Mm -hmm. Calda, I have enjoyed this conversation so much. I think it has been full of good information for our listeners. And I think they're going to learn a lot from it. Um, before we go though, would you just share with us, how can people find you? Where can okay. they hang out with you on the internet? Where can they find your books? All those lovely things. Well, I've said a lot of things about Amazon and Kindle and Audible. So that's where my, that's where my uh, book babies are. They all live there. And I also am, uh, I have a website, keldalangpoinot.com. And I'm mostly on Facebook and LinkedIn. I do have an author page on Facebook, uh, Kelda Poinot author. And I uh, post there periodically. I, but I am, uh, I'm learning how to navigate Pinterest other than just being a user of Pinterest. So that's, mm -hmm. I'm out there too. I have an author page on Pinterest now. And again, uh, just if, you know, if they're in need of some encouragement, uh, my books are there for them for encouragement and just maybe a good little escape. Some of my fiction yes. <laughs> is out there. Yes, very much so. Well, Calda, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it and I value you as a writer and as a friend too, because we are friends. I just appreciate you so much and you, I always enjoy talking to you. Always. Thank you, thank you so Rachel. Fun. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Join us here next week as we continue this conversation of the business of Christian fiction. <laughs>